Hello again, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name is John. I'm a full-time eBay reseller based in Melbourne, Australia. And um, yeah, this is my basement. It is morning, it is sunny outside, but this is all I've got to work with. So um, today I wanna to do a quick video to talk about testing, really testing your assumptions. Uh, what do I mean by that? So there's this thing called a confirmation bias where when you're presented with a piece of information, your brain can take it and do a whole bunch of hoops and jumps to try and create a narrative, a story that you personally like and that will help you to justify the decisions that you make. Um, a simple one, right, is where you see an item, that's for, you, see an item that you want to sell and you could sell it to anybody overseas. We have the services here to do it, be it courier or via Australia Post, but the brain goes, no one's going to pay $30 of shipping for a $10 item. Doesn't make any sense. I wouldn't. Why would anybody else? Who would pay $50, $100 to ship this item securely and insured? Like it's three, four times the price of the item. That's a narrative, right? That you've created to make a decision for your business when really what you should have done is make the option available, state the price at which you're going to ship it at and test. I've done this. I remember the first time I sold a $2 Hot Wheels car. It was a used car. It was nothing special, just a standard mainline. But I think for the fact that it was in, was in pretty good condition, more, I'm pretty sure the paint didn't have any chips on it. There were a couple of like micro... Anyways, if you're not a car person, that's besides the point. The point is, it was $2 and someone paid $30 to get it shipped to the States. The place where the item probably came from anyways. And that blew my mind. Um, at that point in time, I had information. Someone was willing to pay this. But without going into the loop of, now everybody will pay this. This is amazing. I have now found an amazing... No. I went, I'm going to make it available again and actually see if this happens again. I can tell you that because I sell used toys and the items are so varied... I had to accept two things. First of all, it's item specific, which means that I do not have the knowledge nor the audacity to close that door summarily for international buyers. I make every item available for an international buyer to buy, but I also know that that buyer could come once a year for that particular item because I only have one of that item. So, where does, that, where does that place you, right, as a seller? It means that whenever you're placed with information on how to, on, on an item that um, you think may sell for X amount of dollars within a certain amount of time and so forth, use the data tools that are available to you. It could be checking eBay first to see if the item is available for sale. If there are 10 available for sale, ask yourself, how many have actually, actually sold? Go to the 90-day sales totals and see if it's only one item that has sold and there's 10 available, there is a good chance you'll wait a while for your item to sell. But if you see 10 available for sale and you see 100 that have already sold in the last 90 days, there's a good chance those 10 will disappear and you also get sold as well if you add it to the mix. If you see no items available for sale and you see that only one has sold in the last 90 days, it could be that nobody has listed any for sale. It could be that all that have sold only sold before that 90-day period had started, in which case you go to Terapeak, which is uh, on your seller hub, and look for 365 days. Look at it nationally and internationally to figure out whether the demand for the item is more outside your country rather than within the country. Once again, don't close the international door, state the price at which you sell it at, and test. Test, test, test. Testing is so important because testing really what it is, is it's you giving your business a chance to learn something that from that point on, only you will know. Think about it. These several sellers over the last year have placed items for sale. Those items for sale, whether they've sold or not, have formed the data set that you get to make a decision on. For some of you, you may require a hundred data points before you make a decision. For some of you, you'd rather not see the data at all because it's too damn hard to work through it. You just go, fine, I see an item listed at X price. 
that's good enough for me. I'm going to list it as well. All I'm really saying is recipes for success don't exist, but measured approaches do. So contribute to the data set by creating your own data. And what you'll find is that your competitive edge will come from the fact that you are consistently testing your assumptions whilst other sellers who may compete for the same items that you want to sell, that may try and sell at the same price point that you sell, because they don't test their assumptions, they don't actually grow. They will get lucky when things are good, and then when things get bad, they will have no idea what hit them. Because as far as they are concerned, the story was rosy from the start to finish. They had, an ending in, they had an ending in mind that they thought was going to happen, and it didn't. You, on the other hand, will be very, very knowledgeable and insightful as to why the up happened and why the doubt happened, because you are a testing and measured individual. So, in summary, test. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.